Hello, and welcome to the History Workshop Series at Southern New Hampshire University. Today we're going to talk about bias and sources. So there are three different types of sources that we use um, in historical context, and those are primary, secondary, and tertiary. It is important to understand the difference between the sources because in history we need different sources to help us illustrate different things. Primary sources are documents, letters, pictures, articles, and journals that were produced or made during a historical event or time period. What distinguishes primary sources is that they are from the time the event took place. So think of it as getting a snapshot of something from an eyewitness. Some key examples of primary sources could be a letter written by Mary Todd Lincoln during the Civil War, a journal from a Vietnam soldier, an article that was written on 9-11, and or a picture of the Hindenburg disaster. Secondary sources, on the other hand, are peer-reviewed journals and or books that were created after the fact. These sources are peer-reviewed by someone who did not experience firsthand or participate in the events or conditions you're researching. These are usually based off of a combination of primary sources, but also they may include other secondary sources as supporting data. These are the most used type of sources because they are used by other historians to deepen and further research on topics and or events. Some key examples of secondary sources are a book written by a historian concerning World War I, a journal article published in the American History Journal, or an article that's found in the Shapiro Library. Okay, so let's talk about tertiary sources. Tertiary sources are things like encyclopedias, blog posts, and websites like history.com. The distinguishing characteristic between tertiary and secondary is that tertiary sources are not peer reviewed and therefore are not considered scholarly sources. These are not acceptable sources to use or cite in your academic work. All right, so let's talk about using your sources. So how do your sources connect to each other? That's one of the questions that you want to ask yourself. Um, how does your source support, explain, or add context to the event that you're researching? How do your sources support your research questions and ultimately your thesis? What do your sources tell you about your topic? Think about your primary sources and how they support your secondary sources and think about whether or not your secondary sources use any primary sources as evidence. Your main focus when looking at citations is to explain why um, historical context caused or shaped your event. You are answering why all the little events you described in historical context led to your event. So when should you use a primary source? Well, when you're quoting a key player in an event, when you're trying to explain the motivation behind a person's involvement, um, explaining what someone was looking to gain in their involvement, and generally just explaining historical context. When you need an exact quote or, quote or piece of information, the primary source will work the best. For example, if I'm discussing how a main player handled the situation, or I'm discussing their speech, citing it gives the audience proof and it backs up my thesis. So when should you use a secondary source? Well, when you're establishing context or themes, gaining an understanding of how a historian makes sense out of an event, when you're looking to access information quickly, and when you're discussing context or analyzing the event. When your interests are focused on one subject, but you need to know about what else was going on at the time, or what happened earlier, you can use a secondary source to find the background material that you need. 
Many secondary sources provide not only information, but a way of making sense out of that information. You should use a secondary source if you wish to understand how a historian makes sense of a particular event, person, or trend. Use a secondary source if you need to find a particular piece of information quickly. Using your secondary sources when you are discussing context or if you are analyzing an event helps to give credibility to any assertions that you make. All right, so let's talk about the CRAP method, okay? This method is something you will hear about a few times as you go through your general ed courses. CRAP is an acronym that is designed to help you make your way through evaluating a source. The C stands for currency and the timeliness of the information. How old is the source? Is it current enough or old enough to be relevant to your topic? Reliability, the importance of the information. Do you see more fact or bias in the source? Authority is, is it obvious who the writer is? Are their credentials stated? Is the publisher reputable? Accuracy, the reliability truthfulness and correctness of the information stated. Is it factual? Is it too biased? Has it been peer reviewed? And is the information verifiable? P is for purpose, the reason that the information exists. What is the author's intent? Is it mostly fact or is it opinion? Who stands to benefit from the existence of this source? And who is the intended audience? So let's talk about a couple of key terms to remember, okay? Presentism is when you view a past experience and hold it to the standards and beliefs of a modern time period. Bias is when you're, you have an unfair or unbalanced opinion. Bias in historical writing is found in almost every source produced. All historians have some sort of bias, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. But learning to recognize the bias will help you in your own writing. Context is the background story of an event. So think of it as a space where one could define an operating environment. An example would be a social structure, a popular opinion, political issues, etc and other components that play a role in, how, in the how and the why behind an event. Presentism typically leads to bias in the sense that it can be hard to dismiss what you know in current time when looking backwards at a time that does not share the core values that a modern society has, involved, has evolved into. Bias also occurs when a person has a particular favoritism towards a particular aspect of a historical topic, and it begins to influence their narrative or how they present the facts. Thank you for watching from all of us at Academic Support.